The technical director is tasked with making sure any video feed reaches its intended destination during a program. That destination could be a television out on set or a viewer's television at home. This video will show you how to quickly work with a Broadcast Pix integrated production switcher featuring the 5000 panel paired with the GX22 hardware option when you walk into the control room as a new TD. Let's assume the control room hardware is set up and configured, so all that needs to be done is make it show ready. This is how you do that. First, power up the monitor wall, switcher, and media server if they aren't already on. Once booted up, open the switching application, and after it loads, look for the prompt asking to load a show. The show file is what captures the state of the unit, any content loaded, and links the system to the save layout of the monitor wall. Once the show file is open, make sure all panels, apps, and soft panels are also connected. The most common issue you might run into is a need to press Join Show on the main switcher panel. Now it's important to familiarize yourself with the monitor wall layout. To your left on top is a monitor that switches between the teleprompter feed and camera control unit settings. Below that are the waveform and vector scope. The first display panel directly in front of where you'll be sitting features every live studio camera source in the middle. Below them are the keyers, which you can think of as layer placeholders. Any source can be assigned to those boxes, and then those keyers allow each to be inserted over top of other video layers, such as the main background or other key layers themselves. Since the ordering of those layers can be changed, the way you quickly identify which one will be above the other is by looking at the key priority chart. This switcher features six keys. Notice that right now, if we start with the background layer, any key added to it will be stacked on top in the following order. The grid shows the hierarchy. Returning to the monitor wall, also on this panel are the media timers used to indicate how much time is remaining for a loaded video or animation element, and the mixed effects preview and program feeds. Mixed Effects 1 is this row of keys, and by default, its program out goes automatically to the onset television screens. So anything you want to display on those, you assign from this row. You can also preview and then take the content of Mixed Effects 1 on air for the viewers at home. It shows up as a source here, working the same way as any other input on the preview and program bus. Finally, there is the preview and program screen used to show what's about to go to air and what is on air. Below the main display panels are a few reference monitors that have the direct studio and external media players routed to them as sources. On the end is a display that is used for live stream control, macro editing, and stopwatch functions as well as chroma keying. If at any time you don't see the correct sources in these monitors, Press Setup 1 and Setup 2 on the Blackmagic Design router to the left of the switcher panel. On the right large display panel above those are more inputs and sources. There are two animation players, two still stores, and two clip players. There are also three character generator inputs. Two of these are internally controlled and one is an external device. The media player and recorder are also displayed here as a reference. In addition to those inputs are two more, the weather computer and closed circuit channel media server. Finally, there are two multi-view PIX pads. The one marked A links to the switcher panel's physical buttons. The PIX pad indicated by the letter B allows you to view an additional gallery of stills at the same time separate from what's being selected at the switcher on PIX pad A. The PixPad allows you to navigate through pages of content that can be assigned to either of the character generators, still stores, animation engines, clip players, and other controls. You can use the PixPad buttons on the switcher to achieve this. As a TD, you'll want to make sure that the correct clips are loaded and in order. Log in to pull up the show's rundown and compare it to the content that's loaded, ensuring they line up in the correct order and on the correct media players. Most video will probably be assigned to Clips 1 unless it's a break or content that immediately precedes or follows content from Clips 1 since you can't dissolve between two clips at the same time on the same clip player. 
Content delivered through the BP net should show up in the correct destination, but their order may need to be adjusted. To do this, go to File, Edit Show, and then select the content you wish to reorder, such as Clips 1 or Clips 2, and use the arrow keys to adjust its position. You can also enable several media player parameters, such as Auto Next, Rewind, and Auto Transition from this same window, or do that later from the PixPad. Save your changes, and the system will update to reflect those adjustments. It is probably a good idea to keep all of the show graphics package elements grouped together at the top of the clip player as the first set of objects, and then any episode or show-specific content following that media. That way, everything is organized and easier to clear out between programs. With the files in the correct order, make sure they display properly on screen and that anything meant for playback actually plays back. You can use the playback controls to control and then even scrub through the content. If you find trailing black at the end of a package, you can adjust the out point by marking a new out using the clip control section of the PixPad. Now that the media is all set, let's focus on the actual task of switching. Let's take a quick overview of the controls. This row is preview, and it previews any of the above sources on the program row. This is what's known as the background layer. Anything you press on preview shows up in the green preview area of the multi-view, and anything you press on the program row shows up live on air. Use the transition section to cleanly move your builds and content from preview to air on program. You can cut or dissolve video and even wipe it, all either automatically using the auto button or using the T-bar and having manual control, so think of T for transition. Wipes can be changed using the PIX pad when selected. Keys can be selected and placed directly on air using the direct key buttons here, similar to pressing the program row buttons, or they can be previewed and taken on air by a transition if selected in this region. This area indicates what layer or layers any transition should be applied to. The rate of the auto function can also be adjusted when selected using this rotary knob. Remember, the same holds true for the mixed effects bus directly above the program bus. Above the program row is a switchable row that flips between source names and macros. Make sure you have it in the macro mode. Think of macro as a cue list where one button auto triggers a string of commands. This makes your job easier because it means less button pushing as a TD. Complicated effects can be stored as memories and sequences this way, allowing for easy recall during a show. On the macro row, you'll find macros for the show T's, open, package playback, and others. Here is an overview for how they work. Before you start a show, you want to ensure Clips 2 is on the proper content for what will be following the T's prior to the show open. From there, you want to make sure you are sitting in black for both your preview and program bus. Press pre-show T's to start the T's macro. There is no preview associated with this macro, so it will immediately start. That's why you don't want to press it until the director has counted down to the start of the show. From there, it will turn orange to show it is in a pause state, but not completed. The content you readied on Clips 2 will now show up in preview, and before the clip timer hits zero, you'll want to press the T's macro again to cleanly transition to Clips 2. The clip counters will count down and change from blue to red once there is 10 seconds remaining. Once the macro sequence has completed, it will have you sitting in black, and the button will be turned off. Once that happens, it is safe to press the main open macro. This will auto-reveal the jib while turning on Direct Key 2 for lower thirds and other graphics, in addition to Direct Key 6 introducing the program bug from Animation 2. Camera 2 will be loaded into Preview once it is done, and the transition type will be set to Mix so that all you have to do as a TD is dissolve to Camera 2 when ready. From there, you can safely switch the show as normal previewing cameras, and then taking them on air.
When it comes to previewing and taking video content, such as a package on the air, you need to use another macro so that the graphics operator can see the stopwatch as a reference. For the first package, you need to head over to the Clips 1 area on the PixPad and make sure you select the package. Then press the Package Start Macro button to load the package into the preview window. That zeroes out the timer, and pressing the macro button again will take that package to air and trigger the stopwatch in addition to the countdown timer you'll be keeping an eye on as a reference. While the package is playing, if the Auto Transition and Auto Next are both enabled, your job is pretty easy. Just preview your next camera source, and when the package concludes, the switcher will automatically take that camera live. And when you're ready to play another package, just hit the Package Start macro to preview it, and once more after that to take it to air, because the next package will be already queued up in the media player on Clips 1, thanks to the previous clip being told to auto advance. That's what the ARXNT stand for in the LCD display of the device control window. L is for loop. A stands for auto start, meaning the content starts once it's on air. R is for rewind, where the clip will immediately rewind once off air. X is for stop, which means the content will stop playback once off air. N is next, indicating the clip will advance to the next clip. And T is for transition and will stop that next clip from playing automatically if enabled. If you see T+, the plus stands for a specific transition that's specified as part of the clip. There are two macros that can easily change the key priority of the CG unit to be behind or in front of the camera source on key 4. The chroma key macro will turn on green screening associated with camera 3 and load that keyer into the preview window with a sample background that can be changed prior to taking it on air. Pressing it again turns the chroma keyer off when done, which you want to do because the camera's coloring has adjustments made to it as part of the chroma key function. The two box setup macro gets pressed once and loads two video sources with digital video effects and cropping turned on atop a still stored background to make one build ready for the TD to take on air from the preview window. Those sources can then be cut back and forth with that build. Once the boxes are done and the last frame shot is full screen, press the boxes reset macro to reset the key priority, transition state, and to turn off the DVE and crops. If you need to reset a timer, you can press the timer reset macro to stop and zero out the stopwatch. For weather, you'll press the weather macro once to preview the weather block. Press it again to start the weather portion of the show. That will take the intro on clips 1 and place it over a build consisting of camera 3 on the green screen keyed over the weather computer. Graphics will then tag the weather presenter, and as soon as that lower thirds is off screen, you'll want to press the weather macro again to change the graphics to now be behind the presenter. Once the presenter has signaled to advance from radar to local conditions, the CG operator will handle the rest of the weather block. When they bring in their next graphic, you'll see it is behind the presenter thanks to your previous key priority adjustment that was part of the macro's last sequence. Let them do their thing, and with camera 3 still facing the green screen, once the presenter has left the frame to return to the set, you can press that macro again. This will turn off the chroma key and have them on camera 1 with the forecast in the on-set television screen over their shoulder. However, you won't see that because keyer 2 will still be on air atop that build, so once they are comfortable at the set, you can press the direct key 2 button to take the character generator off the air. Key 2's direct key button has been assigned an adjusted rate level so that it dissolves when pushed rather than cut. You'll probably want to queue up a full screen graphic or logo on Mixed Effects 1 and dissolve to that as the show closes out, because once that TV is clear, graphics will then want to take the weather forecast offline so they can have the end credits ready. Once you see Key 2 is clear, it is safe to bring in Direct Key 2 once again so that the credits can key over top of the video that's being used for the show's close. When finished, use the Fade to Black button to dissolve to black. The Fade to Black button is like having a layer of black above all other layers. 
and with the keyer still on, it's a safe bet for a clean finish. If you need to start fresh and reset during a show taping, don't forget to turn off the bug and character generator direct keys after pressing the setup macro. It can be a daunting task to be responsible for all of the video sources and how they assemble together in a live production when you're the technical director, but being prepared by getting to know the production switcher and how it works will help ease your nerves with time.